Okay, so how can we use this system for our own benefit? Because this represents a perfect example of uh, making transgenic plants in dicots, at least in dicots. If we could be able to do it in dicots, maybe there is a way we can do it for monocots, but first we have to do it something. There are a few problems with using TI plasmid in genetic engineering for making transgenic plants. Number one is the size of the TI plasmid. As I already discussed, it is around 200 KB. That's a huge size for a plasmid. So this is one problem. The other problem is the expression of growth regulators to produce tumors. Inside the tDNA, there are genes for auxins and cytokines. Remember this? Auxin and cytokine. There's a gene for auxin and there's a cytokine. So these phytohormones can actually produce tumors, can have a lot of energy and will be very difficult to control. Uh, the third one is opine synthesis. Again, if we you want to use this we do not want these genes in them then the other another problem is the unique restriction sites absence without using restriction enzymes without having unique ncs multiple cloning site it will be very difficult for us so using molecular biotechnology advanced techniques we have devised a system to use agrobacterium tumor infection ti plasmid to our benefits. How we do this, there are two strategies. One is known as the binary vector strategy and the other one is known as the co-integration strategy. When we use these two strategies, we can actually get rid of all these limitations that the natural TF plasma offer. How can we do this? Let's discuss. Now in the binary vector strategy, as we discussed in a number of other phenomena, in plant and genetic engineering chapter, restoration of a function of a gene through complementation. So now in this case, you see we are using two plasmids. One is of 170 KB and the other one is of 20 KB. And if you could see in this model binary vector strategy system, we have a plasmid A and a plasmid B. Plasmid A contains the virulence region. Plasmid A also contains the host specificity region. This is very important, the host specificity region. This is how it recognizes the plants and infects. We need the virulence region or not. Yes, we do. Because the virulence region contains the genes, the A to G genes, which will make the channel, the tubing system, the bacterial uh, secretion system type four. And through this tubular, protein tubular system, only then we will be able to transfer our tDNA into the plant cytoplasm from where, from where it will integrate into the genome of the plant. So this is very important and this is very important. Now this plasmid has only two parts, the virulence region and the host specificity. The second plasmid, as the, it, the name says binary vector, so there must be two vectors. And there is the tDNA, it contains only tDNA. Now the loss or the absence of tDNA in plasmid A is complemented by plasmid B, which is just roughly 20 KB and together, these two are 190 KB or roughly 20, 200 KB, which is actually restoring the, the size of the natural TI plasmid, which is roughly around a little more or a little less 200 KB. So the complementation system is also playing a role here. Remember the complementation system, if there is a gene defective in bacteria, for example, an amino acid gene, and that amino acid is not provided even in the medium, but we provide that gene on a plasmid inside the bacterium. So that gene on the plasmid would complement the defective or the deleted gene in the 
in the um, bacterial chromosome. Same is the case here. We have a vector, a binary vector strategy in which one plasmid, in which we have two plasmids, one plasmid contains the tDNA and the other plasmid does not have tDNA, but it has the rest of the, the things. And there are no genes for opine and there's no genes for auxins and cytokines. This is very important. And both of these plasmids, though we have uh, derived this idea from the TI plasmid, the natural TI plasmid, they are synthetic. Both of these are synthetic plasmids. Now to complete, how does this happen? We have actually modified this plasmid B. This is a simple representation of the idea, how actually we can do it. This is, um, I forgot the name of this gene. This is PLN30 something. I will tell you, let you, I will see it and I will let you know. Now, <clears throat> if you remember, let's go back again. The left border and the right border. It's very important. Anything in between these two borders will be integrated into the plant genome because the excision for the tDNA will be here and here. And everything in between these genes will be integrated into a plant genome. So this is the part of the tDNA. In this case, in this plasmid, this is the tDNA. The system and the transfer, the system of the excision, transfer, and integration of T plasmid would be working as long as it has the left repeat and the right repeat. Whatever is cloned in between these two left and right hand repeats, it does not matter. The plasmid does not know anything. And this is what we are exploring. We have a leg Z gene here, and inside the leg Z, we have restriction sites. Then we have a canamycin resistance for selection of uh, transformants to know which agrobacterium tumor patients have got our plasmid. And then we have another plasmid. So what we will do, we will take the bacteria. We will let these two plasmids, be, the bacteria would be necessarily agrobacterium tumor patients without TI plasmid, without natural TI plasmid. And then these two will be inserted inside them. When these two will be inserted inside them through canamycin resistance genes, we will find out if or if not the bacterium has cut this plasmid. And then the next step, what will happen? We will incubate them in plant cells. When we incubate them in plant cells, this host specificity gene and the virulence gene will make the tubing system, will chop, will cut this DNA from this right and left part and this restriction site. This is where our gene of interest would be. The gene of interest would be cloned here. The leg Z would be insertionally inactivated. We will know through blue white screening if our gene has reached our desired location. And eventually, this part containing the gene of interest would be integrated into the plant genome. And eventually, we would have plant genetic engineering done and we would have our transgenic plant. Okay, the last and the second strategy, the last part of the lecture and the second strategy for using TI plasmid is known as co-integration strategy. Now in co-integration strategy, what we use is a normal TI plasmid. The normal TI plasmid, we do not do any changes. What we do, we take a small E. coli plasmid. This is the gene to be cloned. So this is the gene of interest already inside the gene of interest is already inside our small E. coli plasmid. We transform this small plasmid into the agrobacterium tumor fission cells. Once inside, there is a small tDNA fragment, and this small tDNA fragment is actually is having um, homology, homology towards sequences flanking the tDNA regions. And through homologous recombination, what will happen, this, this whole part, this whole part would be integrated inside the tDNA, just like this. You see, now this is the tDNA, and this is a small piece of tDNA. This tDNA, the, due to homologous recombination, uh, this part has entered into the normal TI plasmid along with our gene of interest. This is this gene of interest. The rest of the 
plasmid is the same, but now inside the tDNA, we don't have the genes for opine synthesis and we don't have the genes for auxin and cytokine synthesis, but we have our tDNA genes and the left and the uh, right repeat are intact. So when this TI plasmid containing bacteria will be incubated with plant cells, they would have all the molecular essential capabilities integrate this part of DNA into the plant genome. And when this happens, our gene of interest will be integrated into the plant and we will have our transgenic plants made. These are the two strategies which are used for um, using TI plasmid in uh, dicot plants. There has been a recent advancement, uh, some recent advancements. It, there has been some recent advancements making TI plasmid enable to infect monocot plants as well. And they have some fair uh, amount of success as well. So conventionally, we could not use theoretically, naturally, TI plasmid can only infect monocots, uh, dicots, sorry. TI plasmid naturally can only infect dicots. But with some slight modifications using advanced molecular biology techniques, TI plasmid can be tuned to infect monocots as well. But that's not the, the topic of discussion for today's lecture. This is how we can make transgenic plants through TI plasmids or the modified TI plasmids. Now, um, this is how it is. We apply the combinant bacteria to the plant uh, wounds, the clone gene wound, the crown gall, and eventually what will happen. Now, we have done everything until now. Why I'm dis discussing this in the plant tissue culture or the plant biotechnology chapter? Because after you have the plant cell suspension, the bacterium uh, will be incubated with it and eventually you will have a transformed cell. But this transformed cell, this is just a plant cell. How would you make a whole, for example, here? You see, these bacteria are here and they have transferred their gene, tDNA, you have your gene of interest inside it. But this is just a small crown gall. This is not the whole plant. How can we make a whole plant? How can we make a transgenic plant? This is just a, just a small part of the stem that is transgenic. We will have the cells from here and through tissue cultures, we will have callus from the callus providing the ample amount of auxins and cytokinins. We will have the shoots and the roots and eventually a whole plant will be produced from these uh, few cells through plant tissue culture. This is to tell you whatever type of genetic engineering approach you have in plant biotechnology, the end of the day, you will have to come to plant tissue culture so that you can take this few cells or you can take that particular piece of plant, which we call as X plant, and then in a specific medium, to the help of aseptic conditions and growth hormones, we will convert them to callus and then to, we will develop roots and shoots. And eventually the small embryos going to the nurseries and then to the fields, we will have these transgenic plants. About the meristem culture, the, the, uh, this is one part of the course. We also have to discuss. Meristem culture is very um, important for making disease-free disease free explants. So it's a very small topic, but the apical meristem tips of the plant, it is um, of vital importance because we use it with thermotherapy. Now, what is meant by thermotherapy? We have an explant. Let's suppose we cut the apical meristem tips of a plant. It is already known to have very little viruses or no viruses. It's literally virus-free. That's why we prefer this. And we will heat it until certain degrees like 80, 85, 90 degrees centigrade for a few minutes. And with that temperature treatment, which is known as thermotherapy, some of the bacteria which are prone to die at, at this elevated temperature along with um, fungi will also die. And this is, and there are already no viruses in this part of the plant tissues. We can use 
thermotherapy and apical meristem kits so that we can have virus, bacterial, and fungal free explants for successful in vitro propagation of plants. This is going to be an aside, there's going to be an assignment for you so about somatic embryogenesis. How do they differ from the conventional embryogenesis? What are the different types and steps involved in the somatic embryogenesis in terms of plant tissue culture? There are two methods, direct and indirect, and what are the major applications? And how do you attempt this assignment is exactly the same way individually, handwritten, blank pages, maximum limit is four pages in this case. Do not exceed the limit like last time, many of you had gone to three and four pages and the deadline to submit is 3rd of May. This is going to be the end of our today's lecture. If you have any questions, I will be glad to answer them in the tomorrow uh, interacting session. Take care and have a nice Aftari coming up. Allah Hafiz.